this is your sign to not let fear get in the way. I went down to the beach to take some pics for my Instagram and took a few bikinis to try on. Yes, it was hella funny to see the people shocked by the marshmallow on the beach, which clearly they'd never seen before because I could feel their eyes literally burning into the back of my ginger head. But I really think that we've lost the definition of being brave nowadays. Like going on the beach as a fat person should not be considered brave. It's a little embarrassing, but it's okay to be fat and go on the beach. But, you know, one thing I want to point out, too, is, like, at the very beginning of the clip, what she said was actually super concerning. Like, the whole... This is your sign Hold to on. not let fear get in the way. I went down to the beach to take some pics for my Instagram. Uh, yeah, like, the, the, the idea to take... Look, you can go ahead and take some pictures for your Instagram. I have no problem with that. But going to the beach for the sole purpose of just taking pictures for your Instagram, man, that is just depressing beyond belief. Because I feel like... In this era of social media, we've lost a lot of living in the moment because we feel we feel like we have to so much portray ourselves so incredibly, I don't know, beautifully upon social media. So we always show off like the best parts. And I, I'm guilty of this too. I, I don't usually go out very often to like a, a, a events or you know, particular places or whatever to have fun. It's just, not per it's just not the person that I am. But I went to the aquarium and I went to the zoo. And while I was there, I thought, Maybe I should take some pictures. Maybe I should make a video. Maybe I should do this. But then I thought about it as I was doing those things. And I was like, this isn't fun. This is actually incredibly terrible. Like, I'm not actually in the moment. And every time I took a picture, every time I stopped to take a picture of something, every time I stopped to take a video, I just kept losing a little bit of it. Like, I was, like, losing the moment. And that's really, really tragic that our whole entire lives are almost kind of, like, revolved around how other people see us. And I feel like, to a certain degree... If that is incredibly damaging to us because we're so much, we're so worried about how other people are gonna see us or how other people perceive us, and we're not really worried about how how we see ourselves and how we're we're enjoying our lives, and that's really fucking tragic because it, for 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 an all intents and purposes, you only have one life and you only have like one time to enjoy these things. And sure, you can enjoy going to the mall and you can enjoy going to the zoo and you can enjoy going to the aquarium, you know, many 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 times. But I feel like. Every time you go to those things, you start losing a little bit more of that appeal to go into those particular places. And I think you know what I'm talking about, right? And it's just really tragic because these people genuinely think that they're like inspirational going to the beach and taking Instagram photos of, with, about themselves um, because they're fat, which is really fucking crazy, by the way. Like, does anybody – I would really – look, I think that to be honest, dude, people have some very, very weird standards nowadays. Like, I remember when I was growing up, never in my life what I thought – like when I was going, in my teen years, never I thought I was like, hold on, let me just go on this girl's Instagram profile real quick and just look at her giant stomach and, you know, back tricep fat because she's so inspirational. She's, she's so amazing. Hashtag, I stand with fat women even though they can't stand themselves. It's uh, a little bit kind of disgusting, but it is what it is. Uh, I guess there's worse stuff on the internet, but then again, like, that's a coping, that's a big-ass cope because, like, there's always going to be worse stuff on the internet that's, like, somebody going, like, well, I did murder 20 people, but this guy murdered 7 billion people. I mean, Hitler was really bad. That doesn't really take away from the fact that you yourself are, a, gr a, a in, like, grossly overweight, grossly obese, and the fact that you're going on the internet and telling people how great it is or, like, being brave. By the way, you're not brave. It's just, like, I guess you just don't have self-respect. It's fine, though. You can go ahead and go to the beach all you fucking want, but it's not brave. And by the way, I don't even think it's practical be to be this size and on the beach. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been around fat people in general, dude. They sweat perpetually all the fucking time, even when it's like... I don't know, dude, like 40 degrees out, 30 degrees out. And I'm not talking about Celsius here, okay? I'm not like cooking, but I'm talking about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I've been around fat guys that are literally sweating, that are walking around like basketball shorts in the middle of December because they're so incredibly hot. And here I am like cold as fuck. But I guess that's kind of on me because I don't like wearing a lot of layers and stuff like that. But and it's also a case of like when you apply sunscreen, right, the SPF or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you don't, I don't have to apply a lot. Like I can just spray down my arm, spray down my arm. I'm good. I don't need a lot of. I don't need a lot of uh, the material. But for these people, they got a lot of surface area, right? They got a lot of. They got a lot of like you know dry spots and things such and so forth, and a lot of wet spots. Uh, a lot of those areas need to be coated three, four, five times because you're not going to get that first rub down. You know what I'm talking about? You got more area. You're going to have to spray even more. You're going to have to spray even more. You're going to have to spray even more. So these people are probably spending three or four times 
the amount of product that I'm spending or you're spending on that same product. And that's really fucking sad. Again, uh, not brave. It's just cost inefficient. Like these guys are literally living on hard mode perpetually, but they're bragging about how beautiful they are. But anyway, let's hear about what this marshmallow has to say. By the marshmallow on the beach, which clearly they'd never okay, seen. Can you imagine like wiping yourself down and after you wipe yourself down, you still jiggle like three seconds later after the after you, you got done wiping yourself down? Seen before because And by the way, isn't it kind of dumb to be at the be at the beach and wipe yourself down for the sand, even though you know you're just gonna lay down again? Like what is the purpose? And also going to the beach just to try on different bikinis is I don't look. We all do things that are a little bit irrelevant, things that just don't make any sense at all. Like Amber Lynn had told me, or not told me, but I've seen in a video where she said that she had changed clothes multiple times in a video or in a day. So that way when she people see her videos, they don't realize it's on the same day, which is completely irrelevant if you're going to tell us that information. Like what the fuck is the purpose? But regardless, um, I know that it takes a long time to change your clothes. And I know being fat is going to most definitely elongate that process by a, a good a good amount. I guess it is a bikini, but then again, you're having to walk out of the beach, go into a particular area, unless somebody's holding like a ginormous towel around you while you do it, which is public indecency. I mean, I'm already on the brink of saying this is public indecency, but you know the point I'm making. Like, going to the beach just to try on bikinis is hashtag cringe, bro. I could feel their eyes literally burning into the back of my I, You know what I also don't understand is when we, these people will sit there and go like, I can feel these people's eyes burning into my head or burning into the back of my neck or burning into my stomachs. Then why the, if you, if you like have a problem with people posting this, if you have a problem with people like looking at you in this particular way or like you're going to outline it, why are you posting this shit on the internet? Like, I just don't understand that. It's like that one dad that was like, oh my God, my daughter couldn't like take this, this ride because she was too fat and it was really embarrassing for my daughter so in order for me to like alleviate this problem that my daughter fell, which was like monstrously embarrassment because she couldn't fit at this music park. Everybody was like looking at her, making fun of her. Uh, I, I scheduled a news conference for this news reporter to make a story about it, a worldwide headline, by the way. And I'm just thinking like, what is the purpose? Like, how can you sit here and say your daughter was like super embarrassed at the fact that she couldn't fit on the ride? But then it, like, here you are. I'm watching this video right now with four million views. And I'm just thinking like. Oh, yeah, obviously this is much better compared to just going to the amusement park and a couple hundred people making fun of your daughter. I don't even know how many people are making fun of your daughter now. Like, it's the same shit here. Like, why does it matter? You guys are... Like, what is, what is the purpose? My ginger head. But I just stare back until they feel uncomfortable, too. That's great, beautiful, and amazing. You know what, dude? What an inspiration. What a beautiful person. I can't believe how amazing. The hero we need, not the one we deserve. The short answer is yes. But to True. explain why... I <laughs> So not wanting to be fat is fat phobic? True. I would invite you to think about a couple things. Why do you not want to be fat? And There's almost like no reason to be fat. And I understand that these people have a lot of skin in the game, no pun intended, in making sure that being fat is not portrayed as bad. But according to all studies we have, and even if you didn't want to go for the studies, just using common sense, dude, it's not practical to walk around with extra body fat on your on yourself on at any given point in time like you're literally just walking like okay you know when you're playing a video game or you're playing like an mmo or something like that even like skyrim everybody's played skyrim right you know when you have too much stuff you're carrying too many sweet rolls or bread or cheese or something like that or like 15 extra weapons or sometimes you're playing the game and you have like 18 plates on you and you don't even realize that you have the plates and you're like what the fuck am i doing with this that's you except uh it's worse because you're playing a video game and there's like almost no consequences for playing the video game but in real life there is a lot of consequences because uh that's actually life-threatening so you're consistently walking around over encumbered with all these extra plates forks spoons and things such and so forth except it's not those things at least those things are silverware and it's kind of cool and you can maybe like use that stuff to sell you can't even do that in real life you're just walking around with like tubs and tubs and tubs of uh, tons and tons and tons of fat on your on your body literally doing nothing by the way like you're not using it and I know you're not using it because you're only getting bigger and bigger and bigger so there's almost no reason to even have that shit on your body but um, you're just suffering the consequences of that for no other reason than to just have it. it's like having a car and just stacking it up with like going to the grocery store and just buying like I don't know, like a, an extra case of water every week and just stacking that in the back seat of your car and eventually it's gonna like you're going to run out of space. So you, instead of like taking the water out, you instead, uh, you go to the grocery store again and then you buy duct tape so you can tape the, the water bottles on the side of your car so you can increase the weight even further, which that's basically what your life is. And eventually your car is just going to stop working, which is what your body's going to do too, because it's impractical to continuously walk around 
uh, consistently with all that weight on your body. I don't know why you guys think it's fat phobic for people to go, I just don't want to live that life. Like, personally, I just don't want to have extra body odor in places that I feel like I shouldn't. I don't want to have to, like, walk around with, like, five sticks of deodorant. I'm a dude, so I'm trying to make sticks of deodorant last as long as possible because I don't like buying them. And you guys are just, like, buying tons of them. And if you don't buy them, ew, gross, disgusting. And then you guys think that everybody is fat phobic for no reason. Like, when you go to the doctor and the doctor goes, ooh, yeah, you're kind of obese why do you guys think that's fat phobic like this guy has literally gone to medical school for like eight nine ten years of his life and you think that he just doesn't like you because what you're fat no he's a, a professional dude his entire job is to tell you that this is wrong but for some reason you guys think you're so special you're not you're just fat and dying of course anyway pretty much any answer you can give would be based in fat phobia. Which is one of the reasons why you guys lose so much reception, dude. Because look, the language that you use is definitely going to be perceived differently for a lot of people. And a lot of people that hear anything, any answer you give me is going to be perceived in fat phobia. That just basically tells me that everybody's fat phobic. And then if that's the case, why the fuck should I even believe in what the fuck you believe in? Because there's no right, there's no way that I can uh, transcend my fat phobia. If you guys can't transcend your fat phobia, I'm fucked. So, no, I'm not even going to try. You guys are literally, like, the definition of impractical, and you're losing reception. Like, most people are watching this shit and going, well, I mean, if I'm fat phobic, if I'm fat phobic without even trying, what am I going to do now? Fuck it. If you don't view fat as a bad thing, then why would it matter if you are? Just because something is not bad doesn't mean that you don't want it. So, if, like, for instance... A lot of times people have an item and they think this is not bad, but if I buy this other item, maybe it could be better. It's not bad. This is just better. And that doesn't mean that the original thing is bad, right? So there could be many things like maybe you have a fork that can spin itself so you could put it into the spaghetti and it spins around, which is dumb, by the way. Just do this or just turn your fucking hands like the people that have uh, electric can openers are sitting there trying to convince me oh david electric can openers are meta hashtag get wrecked bro and i'm just sitting there like dude all you gotta do is this like it's just this it's not that much time it's like it's, it's a, maybe like a second later how many calories do you think you're extra burning because like you're turning your fucking hand sideways dude i don't know it's like so many people want to like make things worse for some reason or like you know those people that have like the watermelon cutters which by the way can we just take a second why the fuck are you buying watermelon cutters how many times do you eat a watermelon a year like three times dude like why do you need a particular device that you're just gonna have in your cabinet for like half of the year and then maybe you're gonna like remember that you have it but most likely you're not gonna remember it because guess what the most best thing to cut watermelon with is a knife which you can use for literally everything else why are you buying random shit to make this one thing easier it's not good. Like, I don't know why so many people just buy random shit when a knife can literally do everything for you. And sure, it's not like the most optimal way of cutting this. But then again, why the fuck? Like, it's just dumb, bro. Like, you're just people just want to spend money for no other reason than just spending money. But the point I'm making is uh, just because you have something doesn't mean that you can't have something that's better. And if it's obtainable and it's something that you want to do, you can do that. And then also, uh, being fat is bad. Uh, so, I, I mean, to be honest, I'm like, I'm over here trying to defend the fact that if somebody thought it wasn't bad, but it is bad. Being fat is literally the definition of is not good, is not tasty in my mouth, is not delicioso, is not a taste good item. Don't want to be fat. It's not good for me. I, I've never met a fat person that was like, man, golly, being fat is just so great, especially when I get up in the morning and I literally have a hard time getting up because my knees hurt so goddamn bad. And when I bend over to tie my shoes, I literally physically cannot do that. So I have to wear flats for the rest of my life or have one of those Velcro shoes that you can get at Skechers, the ones that light up. Like, it's just, you know, it's tough. But then again, it is what it is. Fighting against the patriarchy, fighting against diet culture. Like nobody's ever said that shit. I mean, with the exception of you guys, obviously, but you guys are super cringe, so. And as far as losing weight for health reasons, a lot of that is based in fat phobia as well. Can you imagine telling somebody that you're fat phobic for losing weight for health reasons? Like, I don't care that you think that it's... Look, <laughs> wow, it is... That is a really fucking crazy claim to make, dude. Uh, it's... it's. If somebody was like, yeah, so I went to the doctor and my doctor was like, 
I told my doctor that I'm having a lot of respiratory issues. I have a hard time breathing and things like that. And he took my blood to work and he, you know, blood pressure and stuff like that. And it turns out that I'm like pre-diabetic and I'm actually like on the brink of death actually. And I have a lot of cholesterol and I'm also like having a hard time breathing and things like that. And my doctor recommended weight loss. And I thought, you know what? Probably should lose weight because if I lose weight, then all this stuff will literally be alleviated. And you go, well, if you do lose weight for health reasons, you're a bad person. You're like bad. You're like terrible actually. So just don't do that. So like you're actively telling people that they're bad people for trying to lose weight, which is really fucked up by the way. Terrible person. That's a very terrible person thing to do. And it's fine that you don't think you're terrible, but that is terrible. That is actually really, really terrible. But you know what? If your job is to be a terrible person, good job. The BMI itself is a racist and inaccurate tool. So? I don't care if it, what do you, first of all, it's not racist. It's racist. The way they're looking at it is it's racist because the guy that created it was racist, which is not exactly how we judge anything in fucking life. Like if you found out the guy that like made forks was racist, would you just stop using forks? Like, what do you fucking, like if you found out the guy that made your fucking Samsung that you're using right now or your iPhone, I don't know, like Ujima or Koriyama or whatever the fuck, right? You found out that this guy was thoroughly against eating croissants or he just hated black people like he was you know he just came out of nowhere he's like i duh, have my fucking hell black i hate black people would you just take that guy and go man you know i'm done using phones phones are just never for me i'm never gonna use phones ever again because that guy was racist and that is obviously something i don't condone no you wouldn't do that so stop saying that it's racist and somehow that means we're just not gonna use things that are racist almost everything that we have in our life right now is derived from somebody that was bigoted or no less knowledgeable about things than you are or other people so is that an indication that we just stopped using that stuff like you know the wheel right which was invented by a caveman uh that guy most definitely did a lot of bad stuff how much you want to bet like he probably was doing he was probably doing a lot of stuff that probably wasn't bad at the time but is bad according to our modern definitions of these things uh are you just gonna stop like using wheels are you gonna like stop like going in your car and driving around or taking public transportation no you're not because that's fucking dumb so stop saying that because something is rooted in fat phobia or because something was made by a guy at one point in time that may or may not have been racist sexist or any other of those other isms that you're gonna stop using those things because i know you're not going to because that's dumb that's stupid that doesn't make any sense at all anyway also been a lot of inaccuracies in the way that we research fatness in general developing healthier habits for your life is not the same as intentional weight loss true but if you develop healthier habits and you're fat as fuck and you look first of all dude if you're fat one of the main ways you can develop healthy habits is to lose weight. Now, sure, if you're fat and you want to develop healthy healthy habits and that in terms of like, oh, I'm going to stop smoking. Okay, great. That's fantastic. Like there are plenty of things that you can do to increase your health bar that you know what I'm talking about. But you guys are literally like sitting there with ticking, blinking red health bars that are like consistently blinking down, right? You've been poisoned. Like literally, you guys just have that fucking, you're playing Minecraft and somebody threw a fucking poison potion at you and you guys are literally ticking down every five seconds. Just like that's you, you guys, that's, that's your life. And you guys are trying to defend that ticking down health bar as if it's like cool or something like that. And people don't want to have a ticking down health bar. Most people want their health bar to go like this. They want their health bar to increase. They want the big health bar, big health. They want big health. And you guys are just big health. So it's not good. Okay, stop making it seem like we're the bad people for trying to lose weight. Now, it's great that you're fat and you think that increasing your health bar through the realm of like getting rid of your foot fungus is optimal. I am happy that if you had athlete's foot that you decided to relieve yourself of that foot fungus. Awesome. Fantastic. It's not good to have foot fungus, especially if you're going to give your boyfriend a foot job. I don't even know what would happen there if that happened. Do you just get foot fungus on your penis? How does that even happen? Can you imagine like going to the doctor and be like, hey man, I don't know what's going on down there. Can you look at it? And the doctor goes, uh, yeah, sure, bro. Let me go ahead and like pull up my chest. Whoa, bro. You literally, you know what? I was working on like Usain Bolt three weeks ago and he has exactly what you have on his foot on your penis. How did that even happen? How do you have athlete's foot on your meat? That's crazy, by the way. That what is wrong with you? We need to we need to study this. That's what happens, okay? If you had foot fungus, and a lot of guys do want foot jobs, not a lot, but a lot of them do. And uh you're you're doing that for your husband or your boyfriend or whatever, and he's going, This is amazing, this is fantastic. But two days later, 
and then he wakes up and then he starts growing like I don't even know like bone spurs on his penis or uh, he's got like bunions growing now. Um, that's a problem. You just made your boyfriend look weird. Okay. Do you feel bad now? Anyway. If I decide to eat healthier and nourish my body better, there are good chances that I would lose weight. Yeah. The focus becomes more on adopting healthy habits than what your weight is. People think that striving to be healthy is the same as striving to not be fat because of fat phobia. Most of the time, those things are synonymous. But if you're thin and you don't think that weight loss is optimal for you, that's fine. But most people are not in that bracket. Like, if you're already thin, you're probably good on weight loss. Like, what are you even doing at that point? But if you're fat, then you're good. But uh, you know what? Like, these people have a tendency of, like, trying to unite those two together. Like, oh, like, instead of trying to pursue weight loss, that's not going to be better for everybody. Like, obviously... You should just be promoting good, healthy behaviors, which is dumb as fuck because most people do look at good, healthy behaviors as losing weight, especially if you need to lose weight. Such a dumb statement. At the end of every single year, I dread January because True. in January, we're flooded with toxic diet culture. Talks of diets and workouts and miracle medications and surgery. True. This is most definitely a true statement, dude. I don't know if anybody's ever been to the gym in January or February, dude. It is a fucking nightmare, bro. You see guys just like throwing weights around, doing two different sizes of dumbbells. Guys that are like deadlifting the squat machine. Like I've seen it. I've seen dudes doing weird shit at the gym. And it's always weird stuff. I get the guys that have just never done anything before, which is fine, by the way, because it's a learning experience. But sometimes people go to the gym for years and they're still doing the same exercises, which is insane because they're not learning or they're not doing, they're not putting the effort to find out whether or not this exercise is optimal. And it's really sad because gym culture tells people to just not approach somebody and tell them, hey, dude, I don't know what you're doing, but I think you're actually performing scoliosis on your arm right now. I don't know why it's bending in that particular way, but uh, probably lower the weight, dude. It's kind of weird that your arm is bending in that way. I don't think you, did you have an extra joint somewhere in your sternum. Like, why do you have that? Why is your, you know, anyway. But the point I'm making is, um, it's okay to go to the gym and it's okay to have that new year's resolution that is going to the gym. Just be consistent about it and just be like, have honesty and also be realistic because a lot of times people will go, I'm going to go to the gym and gain 40 pounds of muscle. You're not, unless you're taking drugs. And even then your genetics suck a lot of dick. They're not going to, you're not going to gain a lot of muscle in that year, but that's okay because you can gain a lot of muscle and it just maybe not be 40 pounds. It might be 10 pounds, might be five pounds, but guess what? Five extra pounds of muscle makes you look delicioso. 10 extra pounds of muscle makes you look delicioso. 40 extra pounds of muscle makes you look like an abomination. Not always, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, it's just not something that a lot of people should strive for. Same thing with weight loss. Like, if you're sitting there and you're going, I'm going to lose weight this year, and your goal is 200 pounds, um, dude, uh, probably not. Probably not. You're going to be really disappointed by the end of the year when you've only lost 40 pounds. But 40 pounds is good. Don't worry. That's a lot of work. And I will congratulate you on that. But don't expect to lose 200 pounds in a year. You're good. You can lose 40, 50, 60 pounds and still be good. You're fine. Have realistic expectations. Don't try to blow yourself out of the water thinking that you're doing something extra. It's okay. Anything to be skinny. Anything to be something other than fat. There's been a lot of discourse in the plus size community. It's been disheartening to say the least. It's one thing to want to lose the weight because this is not to say that these fat people owe it to the community to stay fat. But it doesn't have to be done by spewing fat phobia. And in my opinion, shouldn't be done by creating additional demand for a drug that's already in short supply. I just want to know what they mean by like, you shouldn't do it from fat phobia. Like if somebody says, oh man, I'm like really unhealthy. Would you literally say that is fat phobia? Probably, right? Like you would, I mean, if you're sitting here telling me that doctors telling you that you're fat phobic is, you know, fat phobia and shit like that, or doctors telling you that losing weight is fat phobic, then we're at a loss. Like we're, it's nothing we can do at this point that is going to remedy what the illness that you have is, which is in the brain. So, uh, yeah, no, there's nothing I can do. Honestly, uh, it's just what it is. Uh, if I, if you're going to tell me that I'm fat phobic for telling people that losing weight is beneficial for their health, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that, but it kind of comes off really fucked up and you guys lack mental capacity. According to the manufacturers, these shortages are expected to continue all the way to August 2024. That's okay. It's the same thing for like most drugs, dude. Like I remember when I was like going to see if I can get like uh, an ADHD diagnosis and like my doctor was like, listen, even if you do get this diagnosis, I got to let you know right now that all of the drugs that are used to remedy ADHD or like, you know, put you at a stable standpoint are in really short supply. There's a lot of people today that have a lot of ADHD. And then I wondered why, why it, has it always been like that? Are there a lot of people that have just had like a really hard time paying attention or like have dopamine deficiencies? Like what exactly is going on in the last 20 years where like almost everybody has ADHD? Is it just like everybody just wants to get high consistently? That obviously can't be the truth because that was like all about the 60s, 70s and 80s. Like it seems like nowadays we're pretty, 
I don't know, stable, or at least it's more liberal nowadays when it comes to drug consumption. I just don't understand why so many people have ADHD, but then he told me it's probably something to do with the food, which I don't really even know if that's true or not. I mean, granted, the food has, I don't know if you can say improved, but Demos definitely has become more stable, at least. Like, I guess we get lower quality food, but we also get higher quality, more realistic sources of food. I don't know, anyway. As a type 2 diabetic, I haven't even been able to get my medication consistently for the last year. Yeah, that's uh, really terrible. That's really, really terrible. I hope she gets her medication. You can probably imagine my overall frustration when I see these influencers out here pushing it for a check. Just my two cents. So tonight was not a good gym night, and I want to talk about it. Hopefully I can do this without rambling. <laughs> I want to first clarify that I'm not one of those gym girlies that is going to the gym for a number on the scale. I'm fat, with love. I am a plus size person, but I'm not going to the gym to make myself smaller. I'm going there to move my body because it feels good. And it's Fine. It's fine. I don't care. Like, it's okay. If you want to go to the gym and you want to do it for bad intentions and you don't have the intention of losing weight, I hope as an outcome you try to lose weight. But then again, it really doesn't matter because most people think that just going to the gym is going to like lose weight, which is not because if you go to the gym and you work out for two hours and you go back home and you eat 6,000 calories of literal cheese you're going to gain weight and you're going to be really discouraged because you think, oh my God, like I worked out and I still didn't lose weight. I'm not going to go to the gym ever again. And that's huh, oftentimes that's how it happens. So it's like a guy just getting negative feedback consistently. Like a guy that's like, man, I love women. Women are awesome. Women are just so great. And anytime you ever go outside or anytime you ever hit up a girl, it turns out that it's a man. Sometimes you're going to think like, dude, am I just gay? Like, am I just like putting out gay energy? Hashtag, uh, you know, BDE or whatever towards men. I don't know. I've had that phenomenon happen to me too. But having to go to the gym when you're fat without the intention of losing weight is okay. But it's almost kind of like, why are you going then if that's the case? Like to just move your body? Like I, I can do that in my bed. I can, you know, beat off for like 25 minutes. Like I don't, why do I need to move my body at the gym? Go to the gym where a whole bunch of sweaty people are walking around with like towels and shit on their back. And then when I go into like the, when I go into like the, 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 the back room to like, I don't know, pee or something like that or uh, when I'm in the locker room just changing or whatever and I see a, an old Asian man come out with his, you know, Long John Silver hanging out. It's just a big giant bush. He just sits down on the bench that I was just sitting on with raw meat on the fucking bench. And then you start thinking, am I sitting on Asian man meat right now? Are my hands on the bench that were that his meat was just on? I don't know why so many of these like elder, older Asian men have absolutely no social standing. I don't know if it's like that in China or wherever else they're from, but dude, you can't just be walking around with dried or wet meat hanging out, okay? Can you put a towel on? I get it. You just came out of the shower. It's fine. But I'm not trying to see your meat, okay? Like, I have no problem. I can tolerate seeing meat. I'm an adult, okay? If I see a guy with his dick hanging out, I'm not going to just go, oh my god, can you put that away? I'm a grown man. I'm going to look at it. I mean, not like that. I'm not going to, like, glaze myself. I'm not going to, like, fucking stare at his fucking dick. But I'm also looking like, if I see it, I'm not going to, like, I mean, I'm going to look at it and go, oh, well, that's a penis. But I'm not going to, like... Anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm digging myself in a hole right now. That's good for my mental health. Being a plus size person, I have had bad experiences at the gym, as a lot of fat people have. Everybody has bad experiences at the gym, dude. Shit happens, okay? Especially as a woman, right? You don't even realize it as a man, but when you go to the gym as a dude, most people just don't even talk to you unless you're talking about that really, really weird guy that's trying to tell you like, hey man, man, dude, you looking real good right now, man. Yeah, bro, I like the lumps on the lumps. I've had that happen to me. But women um, almost always get harassed at the gym. It's kind of crazy, dude, especially if you're really, really pretty. I remember this girl was like literally telling me like, you need to go to the gym with me. And I was like, why? And she said, there is a guy that works there. And every day I walk in, he consistently tells me I'm beautiful and I'm a princess. And he tells me that I'm the queen. And he tells me my workout is progress is good. I'm like, oh, that sounds fine. Then he's like, yeah, but he does it really creepily. Like he always walks by me. He always stops when he cleans. Like I th he, I, he's never cleaned anything before. But then he like the moment I walked in, he's cleaning stuff. He's coming over to me. He's talking to me. And then when I went in, with her, no interactions at all. Like the guy didn't do shit. He was just minding his own business. But wouldn't you know it that next day when I didn't go with her, a lot more interactions from the same guy. I don't know what's up with that shit. But a lot of girls have to deal with that. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure that guys have to deal with harassment and shit like that too. But this is, I think, solely a unique woman experience for, I don't know, maybe not a lot of women. I don't know. Maybe you could let me know down below. But uh, everybody has bad experiences at the gym, okay? It happens, all right, dude? Like I remember one time I was at the gym and I had to dry or wipe off my machine right so i literally picked up i don't know if somebody pulled this fucking trick on me or not dude but it was really awkward but i lifted up the thing that you sprayed the sprayer and the top just fell off and then as it fell off it just went on the floor and i was just like looking at it like this like oh well 
Well, fuck, bro. And I've never, ever since then, I always grab it from the bottom and then I take it from the top to ensure that the thing is properly screwed in. Because a lot of people, I feel like, are just unscrewing it subtly and putting it back so that way they can make fun of somebody picking it up and having it drop. But, but you know, if you're doing that, by the way, fuck you! And like most fat people, that introduces a little bit of anxiety into my experiences moving forward. That being said, I am on social media. Man, it's got to be tough to have like no top lip, dude. It's kind of okay for me because I think my top lip is optimal. It's not the best. It's not the most voluptuous, but it can do the job, okay? I've dated black women before, black women with very voluptuous lips, and it's 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 life-changing to be kissed by a black lady when your lips are almost non-existent, bones almost, and her lips are voluptuous, just solid, very lubricated, nice taking care of lips, and they're almost kind of like, I can feel them on my nose almost, and obviously not just black ladies have this, but I've only ever dated black ladies, so this is something that you know, I have a unique experience about, and uh, it's, it's different, it's most definitely different, and I've asked them like, hey, um, how do you feel about like kissing me knowing that I have like, you know, boned up lips and they go, it's a little weird. Your lips are actually very, very small, but they're not that small. And it's tough for women because like dudes don't like nobody's going in and getting lip injections as a guy. Like, what are you talking about? Like, sure. There are, might be that one, one off gay dude that's going in and getting like a BBL and like, you know, an add on of lip injections, but most men are not really caring about themselves to that capacity or in general, they're not really caring about themselves. Um, like, I knew a dude that literally made a stick of deodorant last four years, and, and I know many dudes that think it's gay to even have a butthole, so, like, do that as whatever you will, but it's got to be tough to have, like, zero lip capacity at all on that top lip, dude. That's got to be tough as hell to be a woman and have no lips. Oh, man, that's tough enough to know about how men talk about fat women women in general but i don't know why we gotta throw men under the bus here dude but okay particularly fat women i don't expect everyone to open the door for me but when i'm a foot behind you and you held the door open for the two guys in front stop of me being a pick me dude stop being a fucking pick me you're entitled as fuck stop that shit it's gross it's really fucking gross dude stop acting like men owe you shit i remember i was talking to this girl one time and she was like dude i was at the basketball court and these guys were literally doing half court so they were playing half the court and they were playing half the court it was this girl and like two other guys and another girl and uh she told me that these guys just started interfering with their game and started playing full court and she had a problem with it right so she voiced her opinion the guys didn't do anything about it they're like oh, whatever get away from me or whatever and she got upset with one of the guys that she knew because the guy didn't say anything about it he just kind of passively was like oh okay let's just give him the thing and i remember like she was like you know as a man you notice david as a man you have more authority to talk on certain situations than other people do and i thought yes that's true men usually do have a little bit more authority to talk on particular situations compared to women right but that doesn't mean that this guy's entitled to talk about the situation just because you think he should you know what i'm talking about it's just entitlement you don't have like it's cringe it's really cringe and i remember telling her this and she was like you know what you're right um and she apologized to the guy because it was fucked up to just say that you know she was uh, arguing with this dude like you should be saying something you should be doing this not everybody's gonna be confrontational just because he's a dude doesn't mean he wants to do that right so in the same scenario like i'm not entitled to open the door for you dude and that's also not an excuse to just throw women throw men under the fucking bus because a guy didn't open the door for you dude hashtag uh equality i don't know dude what are we like what is the objective here you and then you let it slam in my face after you already looked back at me okay but you know what maybe i'm just in my head you right? are could have been a number of things go to the bathroom place my bag down in front of one of the mirrors turn around tiny woman taking up entire mirror she looks at me i look at her i grab my bag and move to another mirror once again, it's not personal. Girl, it's not because you're fat. She just knew the mirror. Okay, yes. Okay, what the fuck is the point of this shit? Like, I thought this was to shit on men, but I guess we're shitting on women too. Like, women hashtag, you know, get away from mirror. What are you, too much mirror access, dude. You Stairmaster, then I go to treadmill. Just doing some casual walking at it. Stairmaster to treadmill, dude. Okay, hey, bro. Uh, if you're going to the gym and you're not trying to lose weight, but you're doing Stairmaster to treadmill. Okay, uh... All right. An incline, you know, as one does. Sure. And a lot of gyms have mirrors in front of areas. And in front of these treadmills is a huge mirror. Every single time that I looked up in a mirror, this one particular woman was staring at me. Every single time I looked up, she was already looking at me. But I eventually did one of these and she looked away. Here's the thing. Do I know all three of these things could have had nothing to do with my body size? Yeah, I do know that. Have I also had strange men come up to me and tell me that I shouldn't be lifting weights because I should be focused on cardio right now? I have. I have had that. In the moment, I just went, okay. But if that happened today, 
be a very different story. And the point of me sharing all this isn't just to say that this kind of stuff gets to me, but more to say if you experience things like this too and your experiences as a fat person buzz in your mind while experiencing these things, you are not alone. I'm sure that there might be a least common denominator here of you being fat might be like a sure like things happen i guess but what like what am i even supposed to do about this shit dude what, what was this like your venting session that like your day at the gym wasn't good because somebody stopped holding the door for you and hashtag men are bad or like a girl taking up too much space in a mirror when you needed to take up that space in a mirror or you were on the stairmaster and you saw a woman looking at you so you didn't like that it just kind of sounds like you're a Karen. Like, uh, <laughs> it just kind of sounds like you're a fucking Karen, dude. It sounds like you're really entitled. And it sounds like you need everybody else to revolve around you when nobody owes you anything. You're a nobody, bro. And I know that sucks to say, but you're literally a nobody. Stop making it seem like everybody else is supposed to serve you. Who are you? Like, <laughs> who are you, first of all, dude? I don't, you don't deserve anything the same way that I don't deserve anything. Stop acting so entitled, bro. This has nothing to do with anything. Like, this has nothing to do with you being fat. Maybe the guy is saying, like, oh, yeah, you should be focusing on cardio or whatever, but that's just an asshole. And, and the same thing for, like, any of these other people. They're just assholes. It's okay. Well, maybe the exception of the woman looking at you. I don't even know necessarily if that person's an asshole. They could just be looking at you. It is what it is sometimes. People just look at you. You're not alone. And even though I am much more confident now than I was when I was first getting unsolicited advice, about my body from grown men i'm not gonna but why does it matter I, I i just you know what i really hate i really fucking hate the i really 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 hate the adjectives i really fucking hate that shit the, the whole the whole grown men why does it why why do you have to feel the need to say i hate that shit so fucking heavily when somebody says something and they say you as a grown man should know this and i always think like you know it's such a dismissing statement because what you're actually saying is that because if somebody is grown they should have the understanding that that this is not an appropriate thing to do because you should have the common sense as a grown person to know this. When in reality, most of the time, you're just saying that to be a fucking asshole. I hate that shit so drastically because people will just say that shit under the worst circumstance, right? I remember calling somebody out literally on their bullshit and they said, you as a grown man should know not to raise your voice, David. I'm just thinking like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like that is the most dismissive, the most like pandering, the most fucking like shut the fuck up, dude. Like what are you fucking talking about right now? You're literally the person acting like a five-year-old right now. You're literally arguing about literal nothing. So the same thing here. Um, it, it, grown men should not really apply at all, dude. Like, I don't know why you would say like grown men should know to open the door or grown men should know not to tell you that you should be focusing on cardio. By the way, that has nothing to do with being fucking grown, dude. Whatever, dude, dumb. It's, it's, just, it's just a stupid statement. And it, it's also like a very, very, like when somebody says that to you, most definitely call them out on that shit because that is actually really, really disrespectful pretend that I don't have nights where I'm just a little too tired to be having to deal with this too. But I had to remind myself, I am in this gym for me. I deserve to be here just as much as anyone else. True. And if they're staring, they're staring for good reason because I'm cute as fuck. Well I mean, maybe you got some butt scrunch. Maybe you had poop. Maybe you had, uh, I don't know, maybe the smell. I don't know, dude. Wait, hey, man. You know what? Hey, if you want to chalk it up to your, your hashtag I'm hot, that's fine. You can go ahead and do and that. And so are you. Well, so I mean, listen, dude. If I'm hot, and you're hot, I think we got different de different definitions of hot. Find ways to move your body that feel comfy, that bring you joy. I don't, I disagree with the idea that you should find ways to move your body that you find joyful because sometimes you need to move your body in ways that you don't like. And I'm not saying in ways that hurt you, I'm saying in ways that you don't like. So like, I know a lot of guys don't like doing cardio. I know a lot of people that don't like doing cardio or doing legs or whatever the fuck and those are really essential and it's okay to do those exercises even though you don't want to do those things it's actually really okay to do that stuff because a lot of people just don't focus on the things that they need to focus on more and they focus on the things that they like doing the most and that's okay it's good to do the things that you like doing but sometimes it's not good and you should be focusing on the things that you don't want to do because dude you have no legs walking around like johnny bravo Please remember for every douchebag there is judging you, there is someone like me rooting you on. But I just want to know, like, you're putting, okay, it's really fucking cringe, by the way, to virtue signal like this, by the way, because we're literally just talking about a guy that didn't open the door for you, and I don't know why we're using that guy as a douchebag right now, that's kind of crazy. And then also to sit there and say that you're on the opposite end of that, because you're going, she's basically saying like, okay, so there's douchebags. And then on the opposite end, there's me, which is, I'm amazing. I'm like Mother Teresa personified, like squared or whatever. Nah, nah. I refuse. Nah, 
you're an asshole too. Uh, just gotta keep it a buck. Gotta keep it a buck. Anybody that does this shit is actually crazy. Like, it's it's so fucking cringe because nobody should be going out of their way going, I'm like super amazing. I'm awesome. I'm like fantastic. But this guy's really bad. But I'm like way really, really good. It's cringy as fuck, bro. Because you like, what are you, what are you talking about right now? Stop that shit. It's cringy, bro. You're not, you're not like the most optimal human being out there. And by the way, this entire video was cringe. You're literally just describing basic encounters that everybody has to deal with on a daily basis. And you're going, because I'm fat, because I'm pretty, because I'm a woman. None of this shit even had anything to do with you being a woman, by the way. Because I kind of needed that reminder tonight, too. Okay, that's it. Bye. Let's talk about this. I have made a conscious... Being overweight increases the risk of health conditions such as type 2 diabetes, raised blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. True. ...decision to not engage too much with fat phobes here. Um, this is not a fat phobic comment, dude. I, this is like, I just have a hard time sometimes hearing these people talk because it's like they go so far and they get nothing out of it this is literally not a fat phobic comment it, it, it's not even close either if i was posting a video in response to every comment that was negative about fat people that's all this uh tiktok would be and also it's just not worth my time it's not worth my mental energy the people that are particularly offensive just get blocked straight away because i'm not interested anyway but I do want to talk about this because this is something that I get in comments a lot. It's something that I see other fat people get in comments on their videos a lot. And I want to talk about this because this is the way that people try to pretend they are not fat phobic, that they are somehow concerned for our health. The problem oftentimes I see with these people is that they they have a tendency of throwing everybody under the bus and when they do that you lose a lot of people that are genuinely concerned because if you're considering this to be fat phobic which is obviously not fat phobic this is like a very genuine comment this is a very genuine expression of the person knowing something and trying to tell you that stuff and now granted there might be somebody in your comment section or somebody you know that relays that particular information in a derogatory way but they're doing it very passive aggressively so you can't like be sure fully and i'm sure that's happened but when you throw everybody in the bus like this you're basically like throwing the people that have good intentions also under the bus too and those people are the ones you want the most because they actually care about you and uh they're actually trying to help you out so you're actively like dismissing tons and tons of good people for no other reason than you're just labeling them as fat phobic because you have bad experiences which is really really sad because your definition of fat phobia doesn't even make sense now my number one question is why would it matter if we were healthy or not? We do not owe you health. And just I think that the idea that you don't owe somebody health is profoundly stupid. And you may not owe yourself health. Like you may not owe, sure, like from a very generic, from a generic, very generic standpoint, you don't owe anybody health. But dude, can we just like take a second? Do you not have family? Do you not have like kids? Do you not have like grandparents? Do you not have like friends? Do you have like family? Do you have like a job? Do you not like have anybody in your life that depends on you that you have responsibilities? Like it, it's such a fucking basic bitch take to be like, I don't owe anybody anything. One of the key defining moments on whether or not you're a good person is whether or not you can do something that you don't want to do. Okay, like I'm sick of people going, I should be able to do whatever I want because I'm an adult and I should be able to make own decisions. That's fine. You can say that shit, but that's the, that's a weak person. That's a very, very, very profoundly weak person. Somebody that is strong has the ability to look at something and go, I don't want to do this. I genuinely think that this is a terrible thing, but I'm going to do it anyway because I know nobody else will because people are depending on me because I have responsibilities. And I'm going to take, I'm taking accountability for myself and other people around me. It's a it's a weak person's ideology to sit there and say, I don't owe anyone health. You can be selfish for as long as you want, but 100% you're going to lose people in your life because nobody wants to be around somebody that only cares about themselves and only thinks I'm going to be selfish and not take care of myself because guess what? It's my life. You can go ahead and think that shit, but I don't want to be around you. And I don't think many people want to be around somebody like that either. It's a terrible way of thinking about it. Why would it matter if we were healthy or not? We do not owe you health. And just because we are healthy or unhealthy, just like thin people can be healthy or unhealthy. It, it's also very, it's very disingenuous to say that as well, because by definition, being fat is going to literally be, it's going to make you unhealthy for a factual statement. If you are fat, you are by definition unhealthy, especially if you're obese. If you're thin, at least you have the ambiguity, the 
you're ambiguous enough. You see that person, the ambiguity, how does the word go? Ambiguity of not knowing whether or not that person is unhealthy. That Of course, that person can have underlying health conditions or so they have some cor- comorbidities or whatever. Sure, that stuff can occur. But at least if you're thin, you're not seeing it. You don't know for sure if that person is or is not unhealthy. But I know for a fact that if you're fat, you are unhealthy. It so it's a dumb it's a dumb way of looking at that like thin people and fat people could be healthy or be, be healthy or not unhealthy nah nah i refuse that that's a dumb statement that's a dumb person statement doesn't mean that we are more or less worthy of the same experiences it just depends on what you mean by worthy and it also depends on what the experiences are obviously if you're fat you're not going to be able to fit in certain roller coasters or you're going to have a hard time getting off the toilet or you're not going to be able to properly wipe or you're not going to be doing like there it just depends on what you mean and when you say worthy i also don't know what you mean by that because if you're fat and you can't do something but you say you're worthy of doing it i don't give a fuck because that's a bullshit word to just try to excuse your bad behavior and you think that other people should be able to excuse your bad behavior even though you're literally not even taking accountability for your own self enough to get in healthy condition for you or other people around you. So even when you're selfish, you're being more selfish by expecting other people to do shit for you that you can't even do for yourself. Just grow up, like become an adult. The, the, I can't believe that you would literally make this video and think that somehow this is a good video to make. It's literally just entitlement to the max, bro. The, not only is it entitlement to the max, but you're literally telling people that you want other people to take care of you because you physically cannot do it for yourself or you just are not willing to do it for yourself. Is the same humanity and dignity being offered to us. So I never understand. And I also think that these people don't understand that like, dude, um, I get that we live in like a society and we have like rules and regulations and laws and laws and enforcement and all this other stuff but you know that's like all an anomaly right you know like for all of time this never happened right like this is a new occurrence and the fact that you're taking advantage of it like this is very very sad this this comment was in response to me saying that wedding dresses don't fit me what has my health got to do with wedding dresses because when you're okay first of all if you're so fat that you can't fit your wedding dress and you're commenting on somebody saying well you know, you that's obviously because you're overweight and also because you're overweight, these are going to be issues that you have to deal with. So forget about the fact that you can't fit in your wedding dress. That's the least you have to worry about. You're fat and you're also going to have to deal with all the other consequences that come from that. So that's the that's and you know what? Like, I know that you're an adult, right? And I know you have the ability to comprehend why that person said that. And the fact that you're just playing dumb is stupid i don't know why so many people play dumb and they think it's cute to be like oh i have no idea why this person would even bring up my health when we're talking about obesity right now how do you not know that like what are you talking about dude stop being fucking stop being purposefully ignorant you literally know why what what has it got to do with anything we know that 26 percent of women in this country are um over a bmi 30 and bmi is nonsense i know but like those are the stats something like 45 percent are a size 16 or above so me talking about wedding dresses not fitting me is just acknowledging that like half the country is being ignored by the wedding industry um it's got nothing to do with whether or not i have diabetes i particularly want to talk about this because i think that we do this to ourselves as well now. That's a fact, 100%. Yes, we do do that to ourselves. More specifically, you do it to yourself. I personally don't do it to myself anymore, but a lot of this internalized fat phobia is present in us as well, right? And so we're like, yeah, but you know, I am unhealthy and it probably is because I'm fat. Yeah. And we go into the medical system, which tells us that the reason that we have any problem is that we are fat and then we kind of they gaslight us, then we gaslight ourselves. My God. And then we ignore things that actually have nothing to do with our weight. And These people gotta live like very, very sheltered lives to never ever have any type of opposite opinion at all or just have the ability to externalize it. And literally every single problem that you have via the medical system or doctors telling us that we're doing something wrong and then telling yourself that you're not doing anything at all wrong even though literally you can't fit in wedding dresses and you're probably on death's door every single fucking blinking moment of the day because you have an inability to acknowledge and you're literally telling us that it's not your responsibility to lose weight because you don't owe anybody anything at all which is really crazy of a statement. You're literally walking around to the most entitled period ever to be alive, and you have main character syndrome to such a degree that you can't even acknowledge that it's your own problem. Instead, you want to externalize it all, which is like crazy, dude. Like, is there nothing that you can do to alleviate your own problems, dude? Not even in the slightest? Like, how can you sit here and be this entitled? It doesn't matter. You True. know what? If losing weight would benefit your health, 
that doesn't mean that you do not deserve medical treatment True. and respect. Um, I agree with that 100%. I think people that are doing it to themselves should be able to get medical assistance. I don't think anybody's disagreeing with that, though. The weight that you currently are. I, don't, I, I, I just don't understand the relevance of saying that, given the fact that I, like, I think most people would probably agree that if you need medical assistance, that you should get medical assistance. I don't think there's anybody on the planet that's going to say no. I mean, there might be a few people, but then those are very niche scenarios, dude. If you are struggling to lose weight, to alleviate medical problems, that does not mean that you are less worthy of treatment or respect it does mean that you're less worthy of treatment or respect you can't ex dude where are we going right now dude why are we talking about whether or not you're going to be deserving of treatment or respect treatment for what okay like how people treat you first of all i don't know you why do you feel like you're just deserve to be treated with with respect you don't deserve that if you're just walking down the street and somebody just sees you why do you think that people deserve to treat you well who are you first of all and the same thing with respect who the fuck are you? Why do you think you deserve to be treated with respect? I'm always going to give people a baseline of respect, but that's different compared to other people. If somebody wants to treat you badly because they don't like you or they just see that they don't like you in general, it is what it is. I think racism is bad, but guess what? People are going to be racist, all right, dude? And that's what they want to do. That's what they got to do. That's just what it is. And the same thing for people that are sexist. If they think that women are just gross, hashtag, hashtag women go back to the kitchen type shit, they have the right to do that. And that's okay. That's what they want to do. Uh, I think people should have the right to say whatever the fuck they want to say. And I think it's awesome, by the way, because it just shows off those people and how ignorant they are. And then we can like look at those people and laugh at them and make fun of them. Great. But the point I'm making is, that's going to happen. You don't just deserve respect because you exist or because you're fat. That's stupid. Stop. Man, what is this entitlement right now, dude? Get out of your fucking main character syndrome, dude. Somebody needs to level this woman out. Or humanity, right? Regardless of whether or not you have a health issue that is caused by weight, that has triggered weight gain, it doesn't mean that you are less deserving. Of it, just me it just depends on what you mean by less deserving, dude, because there are going to be things that are no longer going to be eligible for you when you start gaining weight. Like some people just can't walk anymore. Some people are going to have medical, major medical conditions. Some people are just not going to be able to do certain things that they were able to do before when they were fat. And when you say like, that doesn't mean they don't deserve to do stuff anymore. Yes, it fucking does. And I would love to know what you mean by they don't deserve to do stuff anymore. It, but by the way, most of the time, the things that are prohibiting you from doing stuff are not even actually from society or external sources. They're just from you, you yourself. You are the individual that is making it hard to do the stuff. So when you say this shit and you go, that doesn't mean we're deserve, we're not deserving of doing this stuff, but you're talking about it from an external source, meaning like society or like medical systems and things like that. You can say that all fucking day, but you're literally like fighting a, a, a you're fighting a fight that nobody else is fighting. It's literally not even a real fight. You're fighting yourself. You are the main reason why you're suffering from these these problems. The things that everyone else is deserving of, or of medical treatment, or of respect, or of people not making these stupid comments and judgment. You, you, again, bro, I, pointing out the stupid comments is so incredibly stupid. Oh my God, dude. Like you're on social media. You're putting yourself out there. You have to expect to have some type of pushback. You can't say stupid shit and just be exempt from people commenting on that same stuff, dude. You say stupid shit. Like, what are you talking about, dude? This is cause and effect in its truest forms. You say stupid shit, you get stupid responses, but it's not even a stupid response. It's probably just not a response you want. So again, get off your fucking high horse dude who is this girl bro why is she so entitled bro on your health you do not deserve what the fuck is wrong with you dude I'm, I'm just sick of people making content that's incredibly like very 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 niche content talking about being fat and how it's okay to be fat and then you are upset when somebody calls your shit out what the fuck are you talking? Why did you make that video if you weren't willing to have the responses? Like, why are you even saying shit if you don't want people to talk about that stuff? Like, you just think that you just make whatever the fuck you want and then people are just going to be quiet about that shit? Then talk to your friends about it. I don't know. Like, talk to your mom about it. Social media isn't the spot for you. You have a fundamental misunderstanding of what social media is. Get off the internet if you don't want these types of comments, dude. To be judged negatively if you are in poor health. You're fucking stupid. What the hell are you talking about? You... I, you don't deserve to be judged negatively if you are in poor health. Are you fucking dumb? Are you do, do you not live in the same reality as me, dude? Do you not like understand how anything works in general? Are you literally like a suffering from some type of mental condition right now, dude? Like, am I actually? Is this actually a mentally retarded person right now? Are you stupid? Like, what am I hearing right now? Is your is your mental capacity severely diminished to such a degree that you don't understand how the real world works, especially not the internet? Get the fuck out of here, bro. 
but also just because you're fat it doesn't mean you are important yes you are that's a factual statement by your by but the way you definize it like the way that you have your own definition maybe but like for most people the average person you are most definitely in poor health, poor health. I'm not trying to delude myself. You have already deluded yourself. So yes, you're right. You're not trying to, but it's already done, so. Genuinely, I don't have any illnesses that are caused by my weight. And Yet. And not only that, uh, your knees hurting and your joints hurting, and then also sitting there and saying that your bride or like your wedding dress no longer, no longer fits because you got too fat. That is literally a condition because if you're fat. So like even that doesn't even make sense. Like you literally can't even abide by your own words in the same fucking sentence, dude. Actually insane. This person is, oh my God. Oh my God. This person is actually incredibly hard to listen to. And I've been fat since I was like 12 years terrible, old. Terrible, terrible. I have some health problems that have caused weight gain, but I do not have any that are caused by me being fat. Oh my God. And that doesn't matter because- <laughs> okay it came out of nowhere i'm sorry that shit just caught me off guard dude i'm sorry but i do not have any that are caused by me being fat and that doesn't matter because whether or not i was the healthiest specimen in the world or i was about to keel over it wouldn't mean that i was less deserving of a wedding dress that fit me you can't expect other people to create things for you when you put yourself in a very, very obscure or a condition that is very, very unobtainable. Like if you are literally making it hard for everybody else to operate around you and then you're upset that people can't operate around you, for some reason you blame them, you're dumb. That's so fucking stupid. That's like literally cutting off your own legs and going, why don't you guys make pants that are made for me? You're in a very niche scenario. I'm, I'm happy that there are options for you, but you can't expect people to cater for you when you're in a very extreme scenario it's just not how it works dude this is a key this is literally like the main problem i have with people so many people nowadays is like you're literally externalizing so many of your problems you're doing it to yourself you're making yourself fat which by most people you are making yourself fat and then you're upset that wedding dresses don't fit you how how entitled how entitled are you that you need everybody else to revolve around you when you you yourself have put yourself in an a, a situation that is so incredibly unobtainable or so incredibly situational for anybody to live in and then complain that things are not made for you. Nothing is going to be made for you. You are in a very, very fucking terrible situation. Or of humanity or of inclusion or of respect or of these nonsense comments. Not Bro, this woman is literally a narcissist. This person, not only are they a narcissist, but they're entitled and they have main character syndrome to the, to a different degree. Uh, this person has gotten everything in their life be fulfilled. And now they are on social media showing you how much of a pick me, how much of an absolute narcissist and how much of monster manipulation tactics right now, bro. Literally everything they're saying is literally just manipulation 101. I would... I can't even imagine. I feel sorry for the individual that has to marry this person, bro, because it's going to be a tough few years, man. Being on my video. I think that this is one of those ones where even fat people will be like, well, yeah. And that is how we punish ourselves again. That's how we blame ourselves for the situations that we're in. It's how we you should. You're That's you taking accountability and looking at yourself in a critical way. It's okay to see yourself in the mirror and go, there are some things I got to work at. It's okay to acknowledge that stuff. The way you're looking at it is like, you're just a perfect human being. And it's like nothing you can do to make yourself better. Even though literally you're complaining about all the problems that you have put yourself under. We justify the poor behavior from the world. Shut up, man. I'm I'm done, bro. This this woman is actually agonizing, bro. She's literally just refusing to take accountability and blaming all of her problems on everyone else. Get over yourself. Jeez, man. Most importantly, I want to say to everyone who has the inclination to comment about how unhealthy being fat is, as though you actually care or are concerned for our health, why do you think that someone's health makes them more or less worthy of your respect? First of all, it doesn't matter whether or not it's worthy of my respect or not. And to be honest, I don't really even care that you think that this is going to apply to me or not. I think it's fun to make fun of you guys. So, I mean, to be honest, like I might actually be feeding into this a little bit. But it's not so much about whether or not you are deserving of respect or not. That is the least of your concern. That's actually like a very, very basic bitch take. I don't care like whether or not somebody would or would not respect me or you or whoever the fuck, but you should do yourself uh, enough to respect yourself, to care for yourself and to care for other people around you. Because guess what? Even though you feel like you don't deserve or you feel like other people don't deserve for you to be healthy, that's a very, very tough, that's a very, very tough pill to swallow, especially if you have parents or people around you that deserve to, like you have a, you're gonna be in a relationship 
relationship, right? You're about to be married. Do you not care that your husband needs you or do you not care that you have household chores or maybe a job or like bills to pay or whatever the fuck? And maybe perhaps being in a healthy framework is going to be beneficial to any of that stuff. Like, do you not care that your parents are getting older? Do you not care that you have, you're going to have kids? Do you not care about any of that stuff? Like, you do realize that your health is going to 100% negatively or positively affect any of that shit. So if I'm being honest, it's not really about whether or not I respect you, which I obviously don't because you're a terrible person. You're saying things that are literally blasphemous. And like, if I'm being honest, if you said this in any other framework, you would get demonized. You would get demonstrously ripped apart. So, I mean, I'm happy here to rip you apart because it is really, really fun and you're stupid as fuck. But regardless, um, it's not about respect. It's literally just about whether or not you're going to take care of yourself. You have enough respect for yourself instead of what everybody else around you. Stop externalizing everything. It's not about what I think or how society thinks about you. It's about whether or not how you take care of yourself, whether or not you're going to respect yourself to care about the people around you enough to take care of yourself. And why are you trying to pretend that you are not fat phobic? I'm fat phobic. I'll keep it a buck with you. I'm fat phobic and I think being fat is not good. But you are on a different level of delusion. It's not even about me at this point, dude. If I was me, like, you can call me mean or a bad person or even a bitch or whatever. Uh, you're literally deluded beyond a different degree. Like, you are literally on some different shit. I think it's gone for you. I think you have reached a, such a level of, 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 of mental capacity diminishing that I don't even think it's plausible. I'm actually... I'm actually like I'm, I'm being honest with you for a second. I don't even know how you managed to put this video out. I don't even know how you managed to download the TikTok app to be able to upload this video, to take the video, to upload the video, and say all these sentences in this video. I'm actually really surprised. Like I thought that you know, like this is a this is an eye opening thing. Like somebody that's as mentally diminished as this person can make TikTok videos with millions and millions of views. Um, good for you. Wow, this is an inspirational story. Here we go. This should really, anybody that is struggling in life, anybody that's struggling to, 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 to for motivation or whatever, look towards this woman as somebody that is so incredibly mentally diminished, somebody that is literally retarded, can do all of this stuff. Think about that. You, you're capable of a lot. You're capable of a fucking lot. If this person can do it, you could do almost anything. Let's be honest here for a second. Because we know that really all it is, is you are looking for ways that you can justify to others and to yourself that you hate a group of people just because of what they look like. She's projecting hard here, dude. Yeah, fucking work on yourself um don't do it to yourself true my beautiful fat people do not buy into this nonsense it is nonsense it is fat phobia wearing a different coat okay i love you bye bye yeah well you know what dude this moral high ground that she got here it only lasts as long as her life is so i was just on a call right. with a woman this morning she's 240 pounds Dang. and her doctor has her eating 1200 calories a day and i was like what do you have for breakfast and she's like a protein shake and i was like okay. what do you have for lunch and she was like usually a protein shake and fruit and i was like well what do you have for dinner she's like a protein shake and some salad i'm going just for bullshit it's probably just fucking bullshit dude 1200 calories for a lot of people is not a lot but if you're a girl i you know a lot of people don't really understand this but uh, most of the time, dude, if you're a woman and you're like a very small woman at that, you probably don't need as many calories as a lot of people think you are. And a lot of people in general have no idea how many calories they actually need until they realize how many calories are what they need. And they've been going, holy shit, I'm eating literally double or even triple what I should be eating in a day because we have no idea how nutrition works. A lot of people literally, like you would think that we would have common knowledge about this, like public school system type shit, but no, we don't. They, we don't teach anybody this shit. A lot of people are literally ignorant. So it is what it is. I don't know how tall this girl is 1200 calories might be okay but if she's 250 given that she's been eating like that for a long time i wouldn't be surprised if she's eating like 3000 calories a day so i would always err on the side of going slow and steady so if you're eating 3000 calories a day maybe go down to 2500 or maybe even 2800 or 2700 and then do that for a little bit of time until you get used to that and your body's plateaus and you go a little bit lower i'm not a big fan of people going on drastic calorie deficits to try to like I don't know, equal out the, the teeter-totter that you've been fucking up for like 20 years of your life. No, like probably just go slow and steady. It's like jumping into the deep end of the pool when you don't know how to swim. It's better to dip your toe in, get a little feel for it, and then keep doing that, go deeper, go deeper. And eventually once you get calm and steady and you learn how to like, you know, balance yourself out in the water, that's way better. And then you can become an Olympic athlete after a few years of doing that. Not You're not gonna be an Olympic athlete as soon as you jump into the pool. So, I mean, but I don't understand the... What does this even got to prove? Do you think that most people are, when they start their calorie deficits, they're going into these major calorie deficits? Maybe uh, there are some people that are doing that, but most people are not doing that. Most people are going in it uh, slow and steady. So I don't know what this like, oh man, can you believe that people are eating just protein shakes all day and night? It's dumb. It's dumb, bro. Come on now. So you're not eating 
food. Protein shakes aren't food. Uh, it's a supplement. It is a supplement. I don't recommend people eating just protein shakes for meals and meals and meals. I wouldn't have a problem with it, to be honest, because like I really don't give a fuck about food to the same degree that a lot of people other do. Like I would personally, if I had the option to just not eat and just be fine, I would do that because I think eating is actually irrelevant. And uh, if I had more time in the day to just not eat, I, that would be great. But I have to eat. So I usually do it for the sensation of fuel. And I'm trying to get as much out of my food as humanly possible. And I'm trying to eat it as quickly as possible because I don't really care about it. So so a lot of people like it's great that your food tastes good and stuff like that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but for me, I'm in a very niche scenario, but uh, for, for the most part, you can do this. It's just not the best. It's really not the best at all. So anyway, she's like, I don't even eat 1200 calories a day. And I was like, oh my God, like your doctor told you to do this. She's like, yep. It's Terrible. atrocious. If a diet program like Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers, Octavia, if these massive diet programs need to make their money. Get Why are you bringing up these massive diet programs when we're not even talking about these things or just, okay, whatever, dude, this woman is just fucking like what do you this woman is actually dumb that's what they're gonna How, do. why are you here how'd you get here they're going to drop your calories in hopes that you don't have severe metabolic damage so that you lose weight like this it's a testimonial for them meanwhile you can't sustain it and you go and gain all the weight back to summarize and catch everyone who, who are those women dude like what, what what was the major fucking virtue signaling in that fucking clip dude jesus if you're an artist who only draws skinny people i'm going to assume that you're not able to draw fat people and therefore you're a bad artist if my god dude i'm sorry dude these are some of the worst takes i've heard in a while bro are you fucking dumb so because somebody bro oh my god dude certain people draw certain things like maybe you like drawing cars and maybe you like drawing shoes maybe you like drawing thin people maybe you like drawing fat people that doesn't mean that you're a bad artist that just means you're a niche artist that just means that you're somebody that's only drawing particular things and that's okay because guess what um people that make video games okay would you would, okay that's like somebody saying okay that's like somebody only making racing games but these racing games are very good like very very good racing games and that's your expertise and then they go well so you've only ever made racing games and they go yeah i've only ever made racing games and they go so you're just a bad video game maker then like even though every single game you've put out is literally a 10 out of 10 it's you're just bad. You're just bad at making video games. Let's just be honest. You can't make like a GTA game. You can't make like a free roam game. You can't make like a Elden Ring type of game. You're just bad at making, you're just bad at making games. That is the most deteriorated claim I've ever heard in my life, bro. Please, for the love of God, get off of the internet with these terrible fucking takes. Somebody has to call this shit out. This is actually, this is the, like, think about this, please, for more than 20 seconds, but then you made this fucking video. I can't even believe that you, like, how could you even say this stuff? It doesn't even, like, even thinking about this for 10 seconds, I knew that you were wrong. That makes no sense. To assume that you're not able to draw fat people, and therefore you're a bad artist. If you're a fashion designer or a designer in general and you do not make clothes for fat and plus size people, I'm going to assume that you can't do that and therefore you're a bad designer. If you make. You, you know what I think? I think because you have an inability to think critically, you're a bad human being. You're a stupid human being, matter of fact. Just, just go back to your KFC and like order that fucking drum bucket again and lick the brim of the fucking. Lick the brim of the soda machine because obviously that's all you're fucking good for, dude. You're literally this, like the most diluted brain capacity I've seen on this fucking video, including that one girl that literally went on a rant about how she can't fit in her wedding dress. So, like, no, bro, you're literally stupid. Like, like, there's no other way to say it than that, dude. Go back home and fucking lay on your back for the rest of your fucking life because obviously that's all you're going to be able to do. Like, I'm actually surprised you're actually in a car right now sitting down. That's actually, like, probably the most exercise you've gotten all day. But anyway, um, we're going to end the video here, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all that stuff. I'd appreciate it tremendously, and I really would appreciate that tremendously. By the way, you look fantastic today. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in granola bar. I found one of these in my fridge, in the very back of my fridge. I don't know if I'm going to eat it. Probably will eat it. I do like uh, pretzels, and this is a chocolate pretzel nut, so I might have that in my mouth. I might have chocolate nuts in my mouth. What are you going to do about that, huh? How do you feel about that? Chocolate nuts in my mouth. How do you feel? Don't tell me. Don't tell me you're not wetter than an African child during typhoon season. I know you are bricked up. Don't tell me you didn't have a rise in your Levi's and you got a little bit of bone structure in your pants. It's okay. It's all right. It's totally fine, by the way. You're amazing. You smell really good. I love the way that your elbows are shaped. Can I look at them a little bit more tonight? Not right now. If I did look, if I looked at it right now, I would probably lose my train of thought and stop talking about whatever I'm talking about right now. So don't show me your elbows. I don't need to see them. They're a little bit too looking gooder. So let's keep that. Let, we'll save that for tonight. We'll talk about that later tonight. Okay. 
by the way, I might be live streaming right now. We usually do live streams around 6 p.m. EST or maybe a little bit before, a little bit after. I don't know. I usually stream for like two to four hours, maybe a little bit longer depending on how I'm feeling for that particular night or if I have anything to do for that later in the day tomorrow. But regardless, I might be streaming right now. Hop in. We're doing stuff. We're talking about things. Anyway, um, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I love you. Peace. Yes, there is reggaeton in the background. I don't know what to do about it. It's just like they've been playing it. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. <laughs>